Good morning from Kilani International Raceway. Round five, I'm joined with Byron Mitchell. I'm Dexter Bruce. Ford and friends, Byron, isn't this exciting? The 27th of May, we are finally here. <laughs> you, you told me it was, what, 2018 last that we yeah, had Ford and friends it's here. Been it's, it's been a while. It feels longer. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Listen, it's cold out there. The track is getting warm. It's amazing to be back on track. The cars that are here is absolutely fantastic. Do yourself a favor, get down to the track. 60 Rand gets you in. If you're doing online through Ticketmaster, and of course this time around, you don't have to print it. You can just come with your cell phone, you can just scan at the gate. So we're actually moving up a little bit here. <laughs> it's getting better, it's getting better. But yeah, look, Button, it's been amazing. We've got so much new visitors from Johannesburg, from Bloemfontein, from PE. And we're gonna, this morning, we're gonna chat a little bit about them, Biden, walk through who are the drivers, what are the cars they are being. So let's get straight into it, eh? All right, uh, I just see now going out at the moment is still the uh, Super Twin Cup yeah. and uh, Super Sport uh, motorcycles. And uh, looking at the top over there, Zante Otto, one of the big talents uh, here at Kilani in motorcycle racing, one of our lovely lady racers as well, doing a fine job over there. Three bike races today, yeah. guys. And I was talking to Hilton Redlingace earlier on. He's going to be uh, running the ZX10 in the Superbike class. And I asked him how things are going. He said, it is crisp, cool air, dry track, pink mountain, bike is feeling great. What more can you, you, I ask you for? You can't ask for a better opportunity than this. Cold air is what every high-performance engine wants. The, tech, the track temperature is not the best right now, but it's going to warm up. Everybody's doing their qualifying a little bit now. Clubman's guys have just gone out. They've done their qualifying. So it's keen to see what the Clubman's... And the field of Clubman's cars, by it's not too bad. It isn't too bad at all as well, uh, their decks, because we got Jess Huggett. That's the, one of the big names that is back. Only had two uh, laps in uh, practice yesterday until a fan belt, of course, curtailed yeah. that running. You had a bit of running this morning, so it'd be great to see Jess back. We always thought to ourselves, is he going to be coming back this year? He's had a, a whole labyrinth of problems with he that jetter. Unfortunately, he has, but he's back on track. He's got a gearbox issue. He's had a uh, fan belt issue not too long ago, but he's, he's resolved most of the issues. He's got everything sorted out. Um, in his class, class A, there's quite a few competitors, of course. We've got the likes of Ahmed. Ahmed should be challenging him in, in, in class A. We've got uh, Cody Albert. He's back for his second race in a 330 BMW back in class A as well. So it's nice to see the class A competitors. Class B, there's only two. Paul Munich is there. Daniel could see in the M3. If they can keep on the black stuff, they're going to be there. Class C, of course. Last year's champion, JP Shea, we can't count him out. <laughs> I saw Paul Minnick as well coming in here earlier on, you know, when that little, you know, brownish gold golf <laughs> comes in here. You know, you know, there's always going to be a good push for it as the uh, day goes on. And uh, it's it's lovely to see uh, a good amount of cars for Clubman's, although we would like to see the class grow some more. Yeah. Like we had a number of years ago, we would go to about 60 odd cars on the, uh, the circuit. And uh, that's what we always love to see. It's one of those forms of racing, of course, it's just by time yeah we see Ahmad Ahmad I think he's down in class F at the moment but he's, he's not gonna last very long over there absolutely, um, absolutely you know absolutely. by the end of the day I think he's gonna be an easy A look we had a bit of a <laughs> chat about it earlier he's in class F at the moment but we reckon it's because he had a bit of an off not too long ago with the car turn three uh, roll the car to rebuild the car and then obviously reclassification takes place and he hasn't posted a really good time but rest assured after the day he'll be in class A that's 100% up there it's more exciting fighting from the back I can tell you that it, much it is it is I mean just having a chat to to, to some of the Class A competitors just are jumping ship to GTI Challenge. They like the reverse grid of having to fight in the second race for the podium spot. I mean, it does really sort of make you a racer when you've got to fight for the position. If you're starting in pole, all you're doing is defending, Byron. Yeah, that's it. And, uh, you know, what happens is it's going to be a lot of great racing uh, as far as that is concerned. We've got GTI Challenge going out there as well. Uh, you and I were talking about Class C yeah. uh, in GTI Challenge. The, you know, it's one of the tightest classes. We're talking about 15 cars oh, it's in absolutely, all. Absolutely. It's, it's lower kilo, kilowatts, but in terms of the racing, the racing is really competitive. I mean, they, they don't push more than, I think, 96, 87 kilowatts, somewhere there, they're about. But they are so closely knit together that the racing is forced to be close. They really go out and take each other's doors. And, of course, like we mentioned, they've got everything to prove. You know, they, they, they've got to show it off. So the Class C boys are obviously there to be watched. But getting back into the bikes, I mean... Uh, we see Jamie Hall, Gerard Fister posting in four. Ryan could see her uh, in P3. Zonta Arte is still in P2. And then, of course, Nicholas Hutchins on that 650. He's in P1. So the HSC boys 
always there uh, doing really, really well. Yeah, HSC runs a great uh, stable as well. Saw Andrew Hutchings walking around you earlier on. Very proud man, as he always is as well, in that uh, orange and blue golf-like colors uh, for uh, the HSC uh, uh, guys. Uh, but looking as far as things, talking about HSC, there's Nicholas Hutchings. Yes, Nicholas Hutchings. Goes on provisional pole uh, for now, just ahead of Zante Otto. Remember, Zante Otto, uh, that will be... As we look at things, there's also the uh, 300 class as well, uh, with the likes of Raymond Alexander, Abigail Bosson. Abigail Bosson, of course, she will be there. Maybe it's a good opportunity to bring in Wayne. I think Wayne is standing just behind camera. Wayne can join us. Hey, we, can, we can have a bit of a chit-chat with Wayne. Wayne is one of the local motorcycle heroes. Wayne. Morning, morning. Good morning. Welcome back again. Thank you. It is on, yeah. I think it's, I think it's on. Let's just make yep. sure Wayne is there. Perfect, thanks. Can, morning, yeah. morning, but good, good, good morning, how are you? I'm well in yourself. Very well. Wayne, it's cold out there. Tire warmers are going to be a critical thing, I assume? Yes, yes, no. If you, everyone's got tire warmers, but um, the, definitely the cold temperature, if, if the tires are not warm enough when you leave, the cold ter track actually damages the tires. It calls what you call a uh, uh, cold tear, what happens. Uh, so it actually damages the tire if, if the track is as cold, as cold as what it is now. So you don't get the full wear of the tire? Yes, it wears prematurely. We must, okay, right. Yeah. The classes, I mean, you guys have got a full field. I mean, walk us through a little bit about it. Yeah, no, we got we got some 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 good bikes out there today. Um, the super bikes, we've got Malcolm and Q, and they're going to be dicing up front. Um, then in the challenge class, there's Brad and uh, some of the other guys, uh, Sean and, and uh, myself. And then, um, yeah, in the 650s, uh, Zante is, is on, on, she's on pace, and, and Nicholas is going to be up there. There's a, the 650 field is quite big today. Uh, we've got some new guys as well in the in the breakfast run class, so yeah, yeah. looking uh, good. So the, the breakfast run, those are the guys that came from uh, yeah. from the from the sort of the track day school from the riding school, and, yeah. and they moved up a little. Up yes, we've we got two of them that's joining us for the first time today. Um, it's Chad Thompson, he's on bike 40, mm. and then there's Piers Canut, uh, he's on bike 77. He's from the Project 60 team. Wow, that's isn't that awesome? Absolutely awesome. Jamie Hall as well, Gerard Fisser, Ryan Kutsia, all of those guys are being really, really well in the 650s. Uh, Lance Jonas as well. Lance Jonas has come a long, long way. Yes, yeah, no, Lance will be riding. He actually just uh, refreshed the motor now in the week because uh, pr the, the previous outing he didn't actually ride because the bike was smoking, so it needed some rings. So they managed to do that uh, now in the in the, the break between last race and this race. So his bike is sorted and he's, he's good to go. And one name I don't see, I mentioned earlier to you, is Sharif Reynolds. I mean... Yeah, I think his bike's not ready. I spoke to one of the mechanics at work. I think he's lazy, bike. to be honest. I think <laughs> he's lazy. He's on the Ducati as well. He's on the Ducati. Well. Well. He's on the Ducati. Maybe, maybe Italian he's take a little bit of time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but apparently his bike's not ready. Um, but, but yeah, so I, I did miss his name on the entry list. You want to get involved? Uh, bike racing, uh, Wayne, in uh, Cape Town has always been massive, in my mind, over here. And we see the track schools happening. What is the, you know, are there a number of great uh, you know riders coming through in the future because what happens is it's lovely to see when you have track days you have all those you know you know amateurs you could yes, say or yes. or newbies going yes. out there and the breakfast club class breakfast run class has yes. brought a lot of guys in the yes. guys and girls yes no 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 for sure the the breakfast run class is is the starting point or should i say it's the it's the first step to racing but the starting point is the, as you say the, the riding schools because that's where guys get the opportunity to actually ride their own bikes on the track and then get the feel for, for, for their bikes and for, for what they can do and what the bike can do uh, on the track. And then get the feel to say, right, is this for me? Do I want to take this further? Do I want to do I want to go faster? Do I want to spend more money? You know, because yes, obviously cost is a factor. But yeah, for sure, we're all getting new guys through. Like I said, we've got two new guys joining today in the in the breakfast run class. Um, and then another source of new riders for us is obviously from the short circuit. Yes. So because that, that's the youngsters. And, and if you train w with something and you get into something at a young age, um, you actually develop the skills that you need at a young age and, and our, all our fast riders come from the short circuit because they started riding motorcycles at a young age uh, whereas if you get a guy who's, who's starting to race at the age of 35 or 40 he's never going to be as quick as a guy who started to ride a bike at the age of 9 or 10 you know try, what I'm try, try telling Johnny Towers that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the exception <laughs> no. I mean just, just, just touching on the short circuit just give us a little bit more insight because we don't often speak about the short circuit what is a short circuit? You and I both know what it is, but yeah. for, the, for, the, for the viewers okay, out there... For the viewers out there, the short circuit is actually um, half of the main circuit. Mm. So so the guys uh, go <laughs> from in, on the straight towards turn two. Yeah. That's kind of the, the area where they... Where they, uh, they sometimes they start there, so then they go around turn two through the king. Then they put in an, another... There's another little tire chicane that they put in just to slow the guys down sort for the king. a box. Yes, a box, yeah. yeah. They call it a box. And then they go through turn three, and then they cut back 
after turn three they turn right and they join up with turn one again of the main right, circuit right. and they head back up towards turn two but then there's another little area where they go through the um, the bus stop they call it hmm. so um, it, it's safe to say the risks are a lot lower with with the, with the short circuit racing because the speeds are lower the speeds are lower and it's smaller bikes so okay. so it's 150s and there's a super single class as well so um, it's it's for it's for it's also entry level, yeah. but there's also some fast guys on the short circuit. Mm. Yeah, and uh, quickly, just Dex, how much has the endurance series also assisted with rider development and more track time as well? That's a lovely thing as yes. well. The Livingston Bob's endurance series no, with short circuit. The, the endurance series is actually is actually something that's very good because I'll tell you why. It allows for team entries. So if you've got a yeah. 150 and you can enter the bike and you need a team of three riders, you can then invite two other riders. So if each person does that, they're inviting two other riders ah, to come and experience it on, on someone else's bike. Very good. And then once the bug bites, they're going to say, all right, where can I buy a bike? Very good. Very good. And I think South Africans on the whole take very well to endurance racing. I think it's what we love because we are a team nation. So we love team stuff. If you look at any endurance series around the world, there's always massive, massive, massive teams behind it. And I really love how South Africans get involved with endurance racing. I think it's something we should actually push a little bit more. Yeah, life is an, life is an endurance here in South Africa. Absolutely. So that's why we love our endurance racing. Whether it comes to cars, we're going to endure the load <laughs> Yeah, I actually need to get going. I need to get up. The you do your thing. I'm up next, so you please excuse thing. me. Go for Thank it. you. That's, that's our local hero, oh. Wayne, Wayne Arden. So, I mean, absolutely awesome, eh? You know, it's done a lot for uh, for bike racing here in Cape Town, and it's always great to catch the guys and the girls quickly yeah. because yes. they're always on the move yes. because they need to go and get into their yes. leathers yes. and they need to go and get into their short pants. And some of them are, are walking in their short pants here. <laughs> some of them are walking with nothing. We're going to bring on uh, the, the veteran. We're going to bring on the veteran. <laughs> we don't often get to interview Uncle Jesse, but Jesse Agat, grab a seat. <laughs> Come grab a seat, Uncle Jesse. Take the mic. We All right. We often hear of Jesse Haggard, but we don't often see him. He's so humble and so quiet. Jesse Haggard, welcome, welcome, welcome to the live show, to the breakfast show. So nice to have you. You've had a bit of car issues with the car as of late. Have you resolved it? Should be on. It should be on. Um, no, we're still battling. Uh, I'm just jumping out of fifth gear now all of a sudden. So we're trying to sort that out. We just had all of a sudden issues with it. So... It's all, we can sort it out before the race. And just tell us a little bit about the history of you, of the group N Eaters, and of, of course of the of the Beetle. We want to hear a little bit of the stories. Where did Jesse Huggett start? Well, I actually started at Goodwood in about, I think it was 67. Actually, a lot earlier. I was micro midgets. I was 10 years old. <laughs> and uh, then I went to Goodwood Dial Drivers. I started with a V8 hot rod. And then for fun, we actually built a Beetle. And it actually was so successful. I, you know, <laughs> managed to build a name with that. They had a lot of success. Yeah. And from there, we came to Kalani. And but so we still carry on. And but then you jumped into a Jetta. You were running Group Jetta, Group N car. Group N car, you were riding a Group N car for some time? Yeah, I've done Group N, I've done uh, Touring Cars, Class B, Supercars, uh, Clubmans, uh, Oval Track, four cylinders and V8s. So I've done pretty much everything here. <laughs> you want to get in there? Well, first of all as well, I know uh, Goodwood in the old days was not too far where you came from as well, uh, Jesse, because you're from Thornton, the mayor of Thornton, as I hear, <laughs> um, and live next to this man over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and of course, you've always had a reputation for, you know, your, your kindness and helping those around you, um, and also especially the youngsters as well. How important is it? You know, the youngsters coming into the sport and starting from a young age in motorsport and coming up through the ranks. Yeah, it's difficult for them. And a lot of people don't want their help. But I've been very lucky. I've had a good innings. I've had help from people. So it's only right that I try and help the other people. Yeah. You know, the more they battle, the quicker they're going to pack up. Yeah. So if we can get them on the right track earlier, the chances that they're going to stay and do well is good. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I, I take it you, you feel very proud seeing a lot of the youngsters that you've helped over the years come up through the ranks and, uh, you know, do so well, not only here in, in Cape Town and the rest of South Africa, but perhaps overseas as well, because you also had a bit of overseas rating experience. Yes, I was fortunate enough to go there twice to the World Championship. So I've been very, very lucky with my racing career.
And as I say, I would like to see the youngsters get go that way as well. Okay, Jesse, thank you very, very much. All the best of luck with the car. I know you got to do some repairs with the fifth gear out, but I know if anybody can do it, it's going to be you. Thank you very much, Uncle Jess. Thanks, man. I'm just <laughs> waiting for Ernest. He's going to help me. Ernest late. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jess. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> That's our local hero, Uncle Jesse. <laughs> All the best, Jess. Thank you, Uncle Jess. What, uh, what a legend, eh? You know, what a got, legend. We got so many legends uh, around you. When you start talking about Jess Haggard, we, we talked about Ahmad Ahmad earlier yeah. on as well. The Levies. You know, these are names that are in the folklore of yeah. Kilani. Yeah. And like I say, it, it's so great seeing the older hands yeah. bring up the youngsters. And yeah. what happens is, you know, I've heard Jess Huggett's name, people speaking so fondly of Jess as far afield in Namibia, yeah. you name it, overseas. That's what it's all about. And you know, what I really admired about him is that, number one, his car usually always finishes, but he never crashes the car. No. He's such a neat driver, and I think it's testimony to the person that he is. He's extremely humble, as you can possibly hear. He's, he's very meticulous, and his driving style is exactly that. Yeah. You know, he puts the car in exactly the same spot every single time, and that shows on the man's trophy cabinet <laughs> until he does. Well, he's, he's got probably a whole building full of trophies. He, uh, <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to the race, here we go. We're going to head up to the, to the Wild Rose Gen yes. uh, 100 Challenge and Sports Car GT. I think that is such a good race. 31 laps, 100 kilometers. Byron, it's amazing to see those cars. It is. It's, it's good track time as well. It's basically three races, three yeah. and a bit races if you put all of it together because usually they do about a 10 lapper if they do two races in a day. Yeah. Yeah. But you see some lovely purpose-built racing cars and, and some production cars in there as well. I, I think we can we can actually run through. So Craig Jarvis in the Janetta G57, that is a, probably the quickest car I think that South Africa has at this point in time. You know, I don't know if he gets bored out there. Because, you know, that's <laughs> what I think, you know what, I'd rather like, you know, maybe start a few laps behind or, or, and then try and unlap myself later, or a day <laughs> later. <laughs> but obviously, the guy that's always keeping him humble is Steve Humble. Yeah. Steve Humble is a stablemate, hot motorsport in the Opel Malak, the Mark 14P. The WB in the Rembrandt Racing Porsche, always there, ever present, not too far. Clinton Thorne as well in the Lotus 7. And of one course, of the wings. The one with the best of wings. <laughs> Francis Cadad is, of course, in the Paul Beam PM84. That is another quick car, also an endurance racing car. Yes. And that's kind of where this uh, Wild Rose Gen 100 comes into play. A lot of these cars can go the distance. Yes. You can't expect an E36 built in somebody's garage to go 31 laps race after race. And these cars have been purpose built, as you mentioned, to go the distance. Yes. Uh, getting to class C, uh, Captain Peter van der Spey. It's nice to see him back again in the... I think he'll be driving that, uh, the Can-Am, the Nissan Can-Am. Yes, yes, there we go. Yeah. I see Nissan, but uh, you, you uh, <laughs> mentioned it. I think it's one of two Can-Ams. There is another uh, Can-Am in here. Yep, there is, is another, another Can-Am Can somewhere Gavin, Gavin Gornham in the VW uh, Nardi sports car. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Eric Salmon in that low Alf. It's what a beautiful car, eh? That green Alf is such a fantastic Lotus car. Lotus replica, Lotus 23 replica. Oh. And, of course, uh, that was... Um, the Alf uh, stands for uh, Fred Wilmot, of course. Uh, and then uh, Eric Salomon. Yes. Eric. Uh, and then Louis. Louis um, um, de Jager. Louis de Jager. Used to race absolutely, here. Absolutely. And, uh, and Fred Wilmot. So Elf. And then what happens is based on the uh, Lotus uh, 23 sports Lotus. car with a um, with a Toyota motor. Wow. What, it. what a, and it's, it's such a small number. Yes. It doesn't look like it weighs much as well. No, no, no. David Franco in the VW Polo in the GSW car. I think that is one of the Super Polo cars, actually. Um, Robert Franco's son there. Devon Lismore in that yes. super quick Nissan 350. He built the GT Club sports cars. Heading into Class D, which is really the new guys. Uh, Ray Farnham, Emil Boerter. Uh, Simeon, of course, is a new guy in the 3.0, Z, but of course, someone who's not new is Henny Bosman. Henny Bosman, lovely to see him out there, the rotary, master rotary, the Lotus 7 there. But just looking at the rest over there, the likes of uh, Emil Boerter, he started his uh, time in Gymkhana. Yep. The likes of Lasmore, Devon Lasmore as well. So it's great to see them come up from the Gymkhana scene. And we do have a Gymkhana happening here today we on do. the spinning we pitch. We absolutely we do, we absolutely we do. Heading into the, the, the Pirelli V8 Masters, of course, Sean Moore, Alistair Brown, Rui Campos, you can't rule him out he's absolutely quick in that the car and the thing about the Pirelli V8 they sort of like the um, how can I put this nicely the rich boys of GTA challenge <laughs> the rich boys we'll just put it that just, way just be honest about it because they don't really care about the body you know I'm their long lost son hey oh, uh, there we go. I'm, one, I'm one of them one of them I'm related to I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> uh, they've got two classes the, the gold class of course the silver class Dennis uh, Gary Thompson Mark Vigier and then uh, Stuart Spooner obviously Brandon Dean one name we don't see there of course is the, 
the local um, the Order House Angel. Yes, Dane. the Order House Angel, uh, Dane Angel, or actually uh, Marcel, sorry. Marcel, Marcel Angel, Angel, who's yes. in now the plus 45 age class. Absolutely, so they are gentlemen, they are distinguished gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, well, well, um, well funded, well. distinguished gentlemen. <laughs> Before we get into the four friends, we're going to bring on another local hero, another local legend. You just mentioned him now, Mr. A. Everybody knows him as Mr. A. Ahmad, Ahmad, grab a seat, and grab the mic. Welcome, Mr. A. How are you? You Wait. can just grab the microphone over there. Byron just want to set him up quickly. All right. Here we go. Otherwise, very good to see you, Mr. A. It's, it is quite cold. You went for your qualifying session. How was it out there? Uh, it was, it was alright, but, uh, but my old tires, I had no front grip. Man. Okay. And if I come out of one, then the car spins, so I knew I must take it cool. Man. Okay. And okay. rather just take, take it, it easy. easy. And then, so I'm standing third on the grid now. So, one thing we noticed that you actually in class F. F, yeah. yeah so, yeah, because the first race. I did a good time. Yes. Class A, and then the second uh, hit at the rain. So oh, they classified me as. Okay, okay, okay. So hopefully today I'll be in A. You should be in A. Yeah. Now, not too long ago, you had a bit of a big off in turn three. Yeah, in turn three, yeah. I had just, a, just to walk us through that moment, what actually happened there? That actually was a, a mysterious <laughs> accident. For, 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 for a reason, I, I, I knew something was going to happen. Uh, because of the aggressiveness behind me. Yes. And then as I went into three, um, I had a left tire problem, which, which I scraped and I had understeer, but I just saw something coming over me, but for, <laughs> for a millisecond I thought I was upside down. Literally, I mean, for those of you that haven't seen the accident, there was a car on top of Mr. Yeah, A's on car. Top, yes. <laughs> it was It was one of the most hectic accidents I've seen. Turn three is synonymous. I mean, it's not a very uh, low speed corner. It's yeah. quite it's quite dangerous. Yeah. And that could have yeah. gone. Uh, yeah, it could have been, could have could have been very, quite very hectic, bad. You know? yes. Another thing I want to mention to you Mr. A is extremely well known in the BMW fraternity. Yeah. Why BMW, Mr. A? The time I drove forth and um, my friend bought a BMW and he told me take this thing for a drive and I felt, yo, this is a semi-racing car. Wow. I'm with a slip curve, short race of gearbox and I fell in love with the BMW. Yeah. And since that time, you can see now everybody's driving E36s because it's an easy car yeah. to make into mm. a race car. Absolutely. Look at my car now, I just reshelled it, but the development I already started in the old body. So now it's just uh, a bonus for me in a new body. You know? Absolutely, I absolutely. Some aero and so on, but I think I, I need to invest in a set of new tires <laughs> to see the potential of the car. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, go for it. Yeah, um, Mr. A, uh, you know, you. Uh, we spoke to Jess Huggett uh, a few moments ago, yeah. and we spoke of you and him as the backbone yeah. of our sport, going all the way back. Where, where did it actually start for you? I started here in uh, the drags. And then some corners, and then for uh, for two years I did drifting, you know. And then uh, I just happened to to, to enter with the uh, um, auto corp with my 535 NRF, and then I felt, yo, this is what I want. This this is this is the adrenaline. This is everything. Every lap is a different lap. And then from there I started off. Uh, I think that was in the 1990s. Wow. When I started with Jesse Hagert, it was just one of the Brian Monda, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then from there, uh, I had breaks in between, and then I'm back now again, and, and I'm enjoying it at my age now. Absolutely. I, I, I take it easy. Absolutely. But, uh, Are you like 25, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I'm like 25. 20, what? Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> now, Mr. A, you know, we were just speaking to Jesse Agut about the legacy that you leave behind oh. you. There's so much guys and boys that's... Yeah. Look to you for inspiration. I you know? drive with that man in a race. Yeah. That's an honor. It is an absolute honor. He, you, he can feel you and he knows where you are yeah. and he knows what you're going to do. Absolutely. So you actually set him up to, to dive him. Wow. So, so technical that uh, he, he's brilliant. He's and and w what's the next move for Mr. A? Where, where are you going to go? I mean, the one series I believe is up for sale. Yeah, you see, I'm busy with the M5. <laughs> And I don't build another car. I'd rather sell this one. But if I don't sell it, then I'd rather sell the M5. Okay. The, and, the, and the one series wasn't a sort of a very popular sort of car. I mean, yeah, it, it wasn't a popular car. How, how was it to drive? The reason why I liked it is because I always liked the E30. 
Yeah. Uh, the the two door small car. Yes. With this car launched, I said to my to my children, this is the modern E30. E30. Yeah. Wow. And, and it is, but it took long to make it handle, and a few tricks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That I googled and yes. searched, and I found it to handle. Sure. I want one more thing. Just want to be a little bit technical with you. Why does nobody race a BMW Ti? I mean, I've seen the E46, I've seen the E36. Yeah. I don't see much TIs, the compact yeah. version. The reason why is I, I bought one, but the parts, the only uh, 200 and so was imported in Africa. It was actually imported. Okay. Okay, okay. And then, uh, 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 it's a... It's a, it's a it's a car for body work. Okay, I uh, see, if, I see. If anything happens to the car, you got a, a problem with space. Even BMW on not space. Wow. Absolutely. Wow, wow. Well, Mr. A, thank you so much for having us. And uh, so good. Good luck for today. It's yeah. the start of the day. We wish you all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have a nice today. <laughs> hey, here we go. <laughs> thank you, Mr. A. You can just pop it in there. I think we've got a feast of legends today, Biden. It's so uh, amazing. <laughs> and, and, you know, whilst they uh, we must appreciate them, you know, uh, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. It's lovely Ab to see. Absolutely. He spoke about Kwesi Swanapur. Remember, we go about the old days. I know we were talking about Kwesi Swanapur yeah. earlier on, on the entry list. Unfortunately. But scratched out, which yeah, is a shame. Yeah, you, you know, he, he was, uh, Andrew Gozza was looking after the car. Andrew Gozza was looking after the car. And, of course, um, uh, I saw the car on the lift. Andrew said the car was going to be done, and we're talking about a Lexus IS 200. Yeah. KSD, of course, is on a pool, another legend in motorsport. Does everybody else's cars, and unfortunately, his car was probably lost, and he didn't get it done in I time. I think it always works like that. You're working <laughs> on so many other guys' cars, and it's like, I'm forgetting something. Oh, my own car. My own car, exactly, <laughs> absolutely. Well, pardon the reason we're here, Ford and Friends. Let's dig into the Ford list. I mean, we want to know okay. who of the Ford guys are here from Joburg. Let's pay a little bit of homage to them. Let's see what's happening. Our local one, uh, we, we can't say no to Franco Donadio. We, uh, we always get his name wrong, so we kind of get it right this time. We're never going to butcher it anymore, we promise. <laughs> yeah, good old Pinto Power over there with that Mark 1 Escort. He makes that, fl that, that the machine fly, hey, I'm telling you. And it's always lovely to see him against uh, Michael Hitchcock, who, yeah. um, who's driving in the Mustang. Um, and that's on biofuel yeah. that is uh, wow. run that, uh, wow. that Mustang. Wow. I asked him the other day, just cheekily, uh, how much horsepower are you getting out of that, uh, that Mustang? He says, I've never put it on the dyno. I said, you know what, I like you, because yeah. you know what, you're not looking just at the numbers yeah it's all about, it's about the, the feel. feeling it's about the feeling you know and look franco uh, Paige lindenberg um michael hitchcock obviously they're gonna keep be keeping they're the front runners but rudolph or rudy the fuss in the chevy can i think they is gonna keep him honest today and it is the 50th anniversary now we it are is. celebrating the 50th birthday of the chevy can we've got a number of chevys as well throughout we the day we not do. in this race because it's an all ford race yeah 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 <laughs> now, the, the chevy can i think is, is, a, is a bit of a 50th anniversary as you just mentioned they only made a hundred of them yes it was only for our south african market the really fantastic car i think in america it was the the chevy nova or the yeah. chevy vega um, and in Vauxhall was also something else, I uh, can't remember what it was. Um, and we got only a hundred of those cars and somebody decided, I think it was Basil van Royen from back yes. in the day, decided to stick a, a 302 Chevrolet V8 in there and go racing with the thing. It was absolutely amazing. The car is an absolute legend. White car, black bonnet. If you see one big aluminium wing at the back, it is fantastic. If you see one, steal it. If you there see one, take it. <laughs> Rudy, obviously, he's got one built. And I think Brian, uh, Brian Hedbert built this car. Yes. And a fantastic car. That car is on, I think, 355 wide tires. That car is going to be absolutely Beautiful. so fast today. So I think he's going to be a top contender with Franco Donadio, Paige Lindenberg in, in there as well. And of course, we've got the locals. Of course, Jakub van Sale, another one from uh, from over from over the, over the waters, we're going to call him. David de Beer and that beautiful Ford Escort as well. Louis, Louis Powell. Powell. I mean, that thing is stunning. <laughs> oh, Louis <laughs> Powell is actually the sort of the creator of Ford and Ford Friends, and Friends, you know yes. what I mean? And uh, really tribute to him for putting this whole show together. It is fantastic. And he's in the classic car race as well uh, with the Meisner Escort uh, as well, fighting it out with the likes of uh, Arnold Develing, Majovicok and Frank Franco Donadio as well. So it's great to see him up in there. Great Ford race, great uh, a classic car race as well. Great field of cars, which I love. It's, one of, it's my favorite cars. Classic cars love. are amazing. It's what I live for. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we will we'll get into it. We'll get into it. James Temple. I want to make mention about James Temple. James Temple is driving the, uh, the Shelby Coupe. 
uh, Daytona. Mm. What a beautiful car. I mean, the, the, just a little bit of the east of the Daytona. It's basically an AC Cobra at the bottom yes. with a bit more aero. But what I really want to make mention is that James Temple, not only is he doing the classics, he's also doing the, uh, the Ford race as well as the 100 kilometer race. So if there's anybody that's going to be tired tonight, it's James Temple. <laughs> <laughs> we, we always talk about double duty, but that's going a little bit far he's, beyond he's, double duty over he's here. He's come to Cape Town. I mean, he's going to make the, the most of it. You've got to make the most of it when <laughs> you come down to Cape Town. And it uh, keeps you nice and warm as well. Do you want to get into the, into the classics? Yes, let's, the let's classic, dig into the classics. Classic quickly. cars, you know, I say always a, a, a big bunch of... The biggest yet. Yeah, it's, you know, an, every different type of car. They're all going out now. There's that uh, 33 uh, Porsche 928 going out there. 535 BMW of, uh, of Cliff and Bacon. Bacon. Yeah. What a beautiful car. Yeah, it is. What uh, a beautiful car. It, it's lovely. Parked in the pits over here. Uh, and uh, like I say, a gaggle of Alfa Romeos always as well in there. Mouton, one of them as well. The Jacques Mouton that will be coming out in the uh, Studebaker Silverhawk. The Mouton's Motors car. Beautiful car. Beautiful. Martin, Martin Bench, a lot of Fords in this race as well. It's uh, good to the tradition of Ford and Friends. We've got more Escorts than the Playboy mentioned apparently. <laughs> That's what I've been told. I've been told to say that. <laughs> uh, you, you, you've been given the green lights on that. There, there we go. And I think it, it's an apt description there because we have Vaynant now in the Ford Anglia. I think that's the only Ford Anglia in the field today. Wow, wow, wow. That's the, that's the real Ford Anglia. Yeah, yeah the real yeah, proper ab absolutely. angle box. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, when you go through this list over here, the uh, Datsun Triple S of Brian Bedin uh, in there, the Ford Granada Piranha of uh, Aiton Bogart, Glenn Aiton Bogart. Um, the, you know, we got the Hutchings out there in Class C. That's a VW Sirocco, 1.8 litre for Trevor and his son in the Mark II Golf. And of course, obviously, they also compete in the Rallycross series. They uh, do, yes. Yeah, yeah, so they're very well endowed. And they, they're not slow with those cars. They, no. They're definitely not slow with those cars. I want to make mention about, I think it's Brian Evans in the, uh, the Capri. Uh, he's going to be in the... I think his name, I saw his name on the Capri. What a beautiful motor car. Absolutely stunning. Lambert racing well, just coming he's past. He's in the Cape Eye Laser Escort, Brian oh, Evans. Is he in the Escort? Okay. Okay, escort. okay. And then, uh, oh yeah, actually there's uh, Jakub van Sale also in the uh, Port Anglia as well. Right, right. Dave Rowley in that little oh. Beetle, the Gulf Beetle. Beautiful or car. as I call it, the Baby 917. It is <laughs> stunning. It is stunning. I had a close look because I was actually at its place not too long ago. I had a close look at the car. The engineering behind anything that Dave built is far beyond. It should be a car. It's, it looks like an airplane. Everything is carbon fiber. Every nut in the box got a purpose and a place. Nothing is too much. Nothing is too little. <laughs> They've built the car the way it should be built. I mean, really testimony to the guys of old. And really, the, the young guys building cars, have a look at the classic cars. Don't discount them because they're slow. No. Honestly, you are you are quicker in a, in a challenge car. No two ways about it. But the way these guys have built these cars, it's they spend time meticulous because they don't spend time on YouTube. They spend time in the garage with you building the car. It's the difference. Yeah. I think a lot of us, uh, Dex, as well, would rather have a slower, tighter race than a faster procession. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. We, you know, when nobody's passing each other. If it's close, wherever, throughout the entire classic car field, whichever class you're looking at, yeah. it's always nose to tail stuff. I want to talk about the, the, the GTE, the Opel GTE. There's a Opel GTE that came from from uh, from PE as well. The youngster, 17 years old. I mean. What a fantastic car. It's a two-liter eight-valve running on 45 sides. The car itself has such lineage in the family. Uh, his, his grandfather raced the car, handed it over to the grandson, handed it over to another grandson, and now the last one is driving. I think his name is Aiden, if I'm not mistaken. Aiden Barnard over yeah, here. Yeah. 17 years old. When I was 17 years old, I raced on the uh, on the Sega, <laughs> uh, on the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. it, what a dream come true over there for Aiden Bonner. That's the Capri Spares Supreme Auto and MNS Cabinets car. Beautiful car. There was supposed to be two GTs, but unfortunately only one around, one, one came around. We have a bit of a streaker. There we go. There she goes. <laughs> not a problem. What a streaker. You, you I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not a problem. That's what happens. So we're getting ready now for, of course, uh, the Classics about to do their qualifying. And it's, it's, it's getting quite hectic. The sun's coming down. I can see Vance Kearney yep. uh, in that uh, Jetta, and that's a uh, and it's got the camel uh, elf. Uh, it's, it's nice. It's uh, it's I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it, Oni. I know it's it's like the old uh, Lotus 99T, the Ayrton Senna yeah, yeah. Uh, drove and uh, won the Monaco Grand Prix in, in 1987. Monaco Grand Prix this weekend as well, Dick. So, it, hey, it is, it is, of course. All the, the stars are aligning, I can tell you that. We've got the Stormers uh, playing off against the Monsters as well. So we've that, got this, the, the final. That's the one the overball, isn't it? 
Yeah, yes, uh, that, 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 <laughs> that's that one. That's that one. That, yeah. that one. The fighting one. There are screens around here. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, we can we can bring in. I think there's a rider that wants to do an interview. Uh, absolutely. You want to knock this one out? We're going to bring in a rider for an interview quickly. Hey, Dylan Anderson. Welcome. So yes. How are you? Grab a seat. And uh, grab a microphone. <laughs> so, Dylan, you've been out there. How's it looking? Nice crisp air, dry track. Yeah, the bike's phenomenal. Um, we made a couple changes yesterday on the steering damper, but the track is like it's really good and the bike's feeling really good the team of the motorway team really did an incredible job on the bike uh, tuning it in and um, dialing it into 100 mm -hmm. uh yeah. have you seen your your times have you seen where you're going to be starting not yet but i'm excited okay <laughs> well that's that's the main thing over here yeah. looking uh, at uh, the, the race ahead um tell us about um you know racing here at kilani and and what it means and and, and on a day like today a very big yeah. exciting day so this is only my my third race on the grid um, so we started at the back of the breakfast class, but the thing that I can tell to anyone that's new in the thing, turn one at, from the start, from the lawn, it is a feeling that you cannot uh, describe to anyone. It's like completely chaos, but fun mm. chaos, if that makes sense. And then turn one, turn two, turn three, and turn four, and turn five. Absolutely amazing racing with this gentleman here um, on Kilani. Okay, and your, your main uh, you know, competition today, who are you focusing on the most? We don't have actually expectations for today, is get the bike at one piece at home. Um, but I'll definitely say um, Alex uh, in the motorized pit with us. Mm -hmm. um, I'm quite excited. I love watching him race. Uh, he's incredible and a nice guy. So yeah, I think Alex would probably be the be the man to beat. All right. Yeah. Also, tell us about your your ride as well, your machine. Um, so we're riding a very special bike, a Yamaha R6, the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. that we changed to the track trim with fairings and a quick shifter, chains and sprockets and all all that nitty and cool stuff and a cool gadget and everything so i must actually thank all my sponsors as well yeah Go for it. <laughs> we got seal security <laughs> garden <laughs> route motorcycles artworks uh, task Force solar good route security motorized and land World. they're absolutely the best people on the journey and they support me and they make this bike absolutely like indescribable i don't have any words to it yeah uh, dylan i hope you have the best race you can eh? thank you very much all the best for today day. have fun yeah, sure. <laughs> How could you leave me alone like Sorry, that? I was so it. nervous. It's <laughs> okay. I'm um, just looking at the, at the GTI challenge. I mean, class A. Kai Van Sel, Yuri Swat. You can't, can't discount Yuri Swat. Yuri's Always there. a smile on Kai Van Sel's face. Always. I remember him as a kid, you know. How, I don't know how old he was. He was very young. He always used to come and tag on me as if he's getting a trophy for the day. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, he can, he can, he's getting them now, so I can tell you that much. I mean, in class A, he's going to have to work for it. Though. He's, he's going to have to work for it. Clinton Bezade. No, Ian Cap. I mean, the, the ever-present Ian Cap. He's been here for as long as I know. He's been in GTI Challenge for as long as I know. Gone up in the classes and he's now in the class A. First race out with a newly built car not too long ago. I think it was round two or round three. Had a bit of an off in turn one. Got the car sorted out. I think he's on pace now. Nathan Victor, of course, the Summit yeah. Racing Boys. You, you cannot discount them again. You know, these guys, you know, you, you're going through the GTI Challenge. Who's who of everybody yeah. over here? Yeah, yeah. we've got Dylan Van Eaton coming through now as well. You know, uh, we're going to get now as well to the Class B section. Yeah, yeah. Saki yeah. Hendricks. So the, we... the Class B guys, uh, they had a bit of a number problem not too long ago. Zaki had it pretty much all his own way. I think he's going to have a bit of an issue today. Tate Bishop is in Class B now. And then, of course, Dylan's brother, Ryan van Eden. He's back. I mean, the newly built car as well, fresh, fresh motor. John De Silva, Daniels in there, Kyle Fisser. Kyle Fisser. Kyle Fisser had an issue with the car. The car is back in again. And Brent van der Schaaf, of course. And then, of course, we've got the, the bad boys, the Class C guys. We mentioned them a little the, bit earlier. The bad boys. 15 <laughs> guys, man. 15 guys. You know, Frankie Innes and Gary Fleming, they commentate on the GTR Challenge and the Clubmans. Yeah. And you want to see them hit the stratosphere when they see great racing like that. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's beautiful to see. It is. It is. Matthew Rowe is leading uh, the, the Class C guys. He's in P1 uh, in terms of the championship. P2, we've got uh, two guys. We've got uh, Dylan van Eden and, of course, Faisal Jacobs from Kenilworth Karting, Kenilworth and Chenchley Karting. They are in P2. They are battling it out for the second place for the championship. Good, good competition, good rivalry. Of course, we've got um, Razik Harris, which is ever... <laughs> you can't discount <laughs> Razik Harris. He doesn't hold it down. He's going to give them a good run for their money. He will do. So out now, we just have, uh, I think it's the 
The, cl the classic guys are doing their, uh, their qualifying at the, the moment. The GTIs are getting ready. There's Tate Bishop as well. Another one to watch in the angry racing uh, Jetta. Jetta. Beautiful. Beautiful moving motor car. Uh, Risa Levy. Let's just go quickly go through the list here. Mark Fontini, of course, and then Daniel Muna. Uh, always there. Ruan Ace in the Ruan Ace racing uh, golf. Devon Dreyer and Wahid Cornelius in the VW Golf, and of course, Daryl van Niekerk as well. So the Class C guys are 15. They are probably one of the biggest fields we've seen in a while. We have, and uh, I see Mark Fontini's name in there. The last time I saw him was uh, about a month ago on CHD. He was uh, racing the uh, uh, the Nietling uh, Astro V8 Chevy. Wow. And uh, wow. he's now back uh, into racing quite nicely over there, getting into the thick of it. Wow, I think it's going to be fantastic. One thing we didn't mention, uh, Biden, was... The NDT Neanderthal Racing Escort. Now, Neanderthal took some time to build this particular car. This is the first time this car is going to be racing. Um, now we know that Nian can pedal a car. And I think that he's going to be up there with the best of them in this Escort. Nian, of course, is uh, well known for racing turbocharged BMWs. Yes. A Paisetta in the front with GTI Challenge in Class A with a Jetta as well. A VW driver through and through. But you know as well as what I do. In an Escort, he was in a Capri not too long ago. He, he was in a Capri lot long too, too long ago. We feared for the worst. The uh, oil filter had come loose on it. We saw a puff of smoke, but luckily he had a big smile on his face. He said it's not that bad, and it's always great to see him out there as well. Race mace. Yeah. As, uh, he's <laughs> now fondly known as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let's bring in Abigail Besson. Abigail is one of the, the local lady riders. And Abigail's always got a smile on her face. You know, that's... <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's because she sees me. I think she's because she's happy to race. Excuse me? No, no. I thought you got always a smile on your face there, and uh, oh, yes. you know you're happy to come and do some racing over here uh, with us. But you one of the big promising riders yes. in, in motorcycle racing. See, she even admits it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, how's your how's the uh, track been looking on your side? How's things been going? Well, the track is really cold right now. So you a couple of seconds off your normal pace. So I like I normally do 27s and at the moment I'm doing 13s. So that's one minute and 30 seconds to get around the track. Um, so I didn't do the best, but my qualifying is normally like not as good as a normal race, I can say. So I'm hoping to get second in the first race and then same with the second race. And like, I wish I could get first, but <laughs> there's a few things on my bike that still needs to be added, you know? So, yeah, so at the moment I'm running like under horsepower, I don't have that much power on the straight. So they just slip away, even if I catch them in the corners. And hopefully next race I can like add a little bit of power to my bike in order to get first. <laughs> How's mom doing? Is she is she nervous to watch always you from the side? Oh, my mom's always nervous to watch me. <laughs> she, she's like, she stands there at the top and then she's like, she like closes her eyes and then like peeks out and it's like, is she alright? Did she crash? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> So Abigail's actually joining us for interviews today. She'll be doing a lot of the interviews off the track as well. So Abigail, it's nice to have you on the team. Yes. You, you're a little bit late, but you excuse because you're also racing today. So it's, it's okay. <laughs> fashionable. Fashionable, <laughs> late. Yeah, I'm super excited to be part of the team today and like doing the interviews Absolutely. and helping you out. Absolutely, it's going to be good. Racing. And that's, that's kind of a unique thing to be doing both at the same time, you know, racing, doing interviews. It's kind of a cool thing to be doing. Well, I love to be busy. It's like, instead of these five-hour gaps between races, I can actually do something Absolutely. now. Absolutely. And I'd love to have a chat with you guys. Absolutely. And, you know, and for, for us a little bit older, the enthusiasm of the youth, you can't discount that. That is so beautiful, you know. That you can do so many things. I mean, we get tired pretty quickly from going up and down the stairs here. You know, well, you know, we, you know, they get out of bed easier in the morning. Uh, all kinds of things over there. But your enthusiasm is refreshing, there, Abigail. You felt you find that now doing all these various things helps you through yes, the day. Yes. Definitely. Instead of sitting idle, maybe for uh, an hour or so and sitting there all, you know, waiting, rather yes. being up and down. Because, like, eventually, when you just sit there, you start overthinking, mm. and then you're like, oh. I should have done that or like maybe this will happen it's like i like to keep busy to like keep those thoughts away and like stay positive about the race because what happens happens 
Absolutely, absolutely. Jess Buhabi, looking at the, the qualifying for the, the big race, Arnold Neveling puts it on pole so far, 121.35. Rudolf De Voss in Class X with the Chevy Cannon with a 122. Mm. So the guys out there, the, 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 the Joba guys are giving the Cape Town guys a good run for their money. Um, class... Nadia, our local guy, 127.6. Michael Hitchcock with a 122 in the Mustang. And then, of course, the guy we just spoke about, Nian the Toy, 123.203. Wow. Have a look at James Temple, yeah. class X again in that Chevy, uh, in that uh, Shelby, Shelby yeah. with a 123.417. Yeah, Louis Powell just off of him over there as well. Just taking a look at the time difference uh, between uh, to you. them. And uh, I see a difference of about 3.1 oh, seconds oh. at the moment ahead of that Granada Piranha of Glenn Aitzenbrogard. Forget it. Also, Oliver Broom yeah. in the Chevrolet SS. Beautiful car. Oh, yes. Beautiful. KZN car. I mean, he, he used to be in an Escort before. I've seen him in an Escort. Um, he drove another car. And of course, a Toyota. We didn't mention the Toyota. Toyota Celica 2000. Oh, what a stunning, stunning, stunning motor car. Um, that one, of course, is uh, is also in the classics. I know. Uh, we had also, it's not Nicky Honeycomb we always used to have. Look at that, sir. Look at that. James, James Temple put it on pole. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Come on. It's tight at the front, and it's going to be tight in the race as well. Remember, so, uh, he's we got, got a long way to go, though. He's got a lot of racing to do. So, if, if, I mean, he's really pushing. It is qualifying, perhaps pushing a little bit too hard. 121s are good times. But remember, also, he, in, the, in the Wild Gen 100, he would be doing times with like 112s, 114s, the other boys are doing. So he's got to be pushing it up a little bit. And also, I think we've got to remember as well, Dex, is that the fan walk today is the classic car. So yes. get out there. Get, I'm going to be on. running. I'm going to be running up from the commentary box just to get down there, just to be in it, just to see all these lovely cars and great characters driving them. This is what it's all about today. Get out of bed. Get it's, out of bed. It's Come so, here. It's so good to be close to the cars. You know, these cars are, are from yesteryear, 1960s, 1950s. I mean, uh, from the 70s as well so it's nice we don't see these cars in the road you see them on pictures at, uh, it's so nice to see the cars actually being right in front of you come down to Kilani if you want to watch the rugby you're most welcome to do that as well we've got many bright facilities all over the place and of course with technology being so amazing you could actually watch the rugby on your phone while watching the racing and being involved in racing you can and uh, everything is happening here at Kilani today and please come down you know what happens is 60 60 rand to get in 60 rand on ticket on, master online on ticket master and of course if you come to the gate you can do that as well it's going to cost you a little bit more 100 bucks but if i were you and you guys are more than uh, four or five in the family ticket master on your way here book your tickets pay online use your phone scan it by the gate and get inside so let's look at Rudolf the Foss in that Chevy Can M50 anniversary. 122, 192. Yeah, he's in P3. Arnold Nitt, Neveling in that uh, Class A car as well. 123. And then Franco on a day when a 127. So, so Franco's the first of the Cape Town boys, it seems. Yeah. Uh, Michael Hitchcock uh, slightly in P6. It's in the fourth row of the grid. Nian de Toy. Not too bad. <laughs> 123, 203. And, and the thing about Nian is he races with his, with his mind. He doesn't just race out there with, uh, with all, you know, brute force, shall I say. Yeah, he's a good car builder. That's one thing as well, which is always great to have. He's got that technical background. He's got that technical mind. Yeah. But then, like you say as well, you race with your brain as well. He's not just getting in and flooring it and just getting a result. Yeah. He's really working at it. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, that's what you've got to look out for. This man has got racing experience in all cat a yeah. lot of categories. Absolutely, absolutely. One thing that's really good about, about the... Uh, the classic cars is the turn one scenario because with gti challenge and with the v8 masters going into turn one they don't really care no right so the, you know why they don't care because <laughs> either daddy's gonna sort it out or <laughs> i'll sort it out myself yeah but with these guys they kind of care about their cars a little bit so they're not going to give it the beans so but they're very close and that is really fantastic to see that yeah, they'll be coming around on these cold conditions on the uh, the warm-up lap, getting heat into the tyres, temperature up into the brakes, and then they're going to barrel it down into that first turn That's over gonna there. That's going to be absolutely amazing. And it's going to be amazing. And then you just want to get through over there. Your mind is in so many places, you know, how... And you can't predict this. You can go through every scenario yeah. in your head. Yeah, But yeah. it's going to be the scenario that you didn't think of. Yeah. That's going to happen. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so good to see James Temple, one of the Joburg boys uh, in Class X uh, uh, up there. Cape Town boy Arnold Neveling in P2. Uh, one name I didn't see on the, I uh, would have loved to see, oh, let me just see if I can, if I can scroll a little bit further down, Trevor Tuck, of course, uh, that's uh, Garen Tuck's brother, alpha guy, 
and then Caddy blows Brian Evans. GTI Challenge is about to go out now. They're about to do their last qualifying, and then we're going to go to the real racing. So yeah. this is the last of the qualifying, Brian. I, I think we are starting at about half past, uh, as it is uh, here at uh, Kilani for this uh, Power Series. Round and five. Round five. And, uh, yep, come down here, please. Or log in. We're on Amu set. So what else we've got going on the track is while well, we've got the, the Jim Connor happening on the other side. We we've, do. We've got a, a bit of a triple header, actually. We've got Jim Connor as well as Drifting. We've got Ford and Friends and, of course, the Chevy can uh, 50th anniversary. And, of course, we've got the Power Series happening at the same time. So there is so much to see. And amongst other things, you know, there is the Fan Hawk, like you mentioned, which is fantastic. Classic cars and Fords all over the place. I mean, if you if you love the blue oval stuff, this is kind of where you got to be, you know? Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, you know, if you love, you know, if you're a petrol head, Kilani, on a day like today is the real place to be. You know, come and walk through the pits here. You know, you don't need special pit passes no, and all kinds no, of things over no. here. Come in, come and say hello to the drivers. Come and look under the bonnets here. Keep Get a, get a peek under there. They don't mind at Absolutely. all. And uh, they won't they won't push you away or punch you or anything like that unless you touch maybe. <laughs> but uh, we'll definitely take a come down here. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're about to see the GTI challenge go out now. We're gonna wrap it up a little bit and we're gonna watch the GTIs do, do the challenge. You gotta go up, you gotta get ready to start your commentary. It's been an absolutely awesome breakfast show. Byron, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Dex. Hope you guys enjoy the uh, the first round of the racing and we will be back for the lunchtime show.